Hi. After the uh, energetic April, let's just say that we've had, I wanted to do a feel into the themes that could be potentially experienced during May. So I've made some notes, hoping it will allow me to be a bit more succinct and excuse the glare on my glasses. Um, I've tried lots of different positions, but I'm not sure what I can do about that. The two themes that came up um, f for May are being same thing but expressed in different ways and they are courage and the energy of the observer. And so this observer energy is all about being unable to heal what we're unwilling to see. And so this must, this is about being able to step back and to view ourselves completely through these honest but neutral eyes. And this isn't something that can be done via the mind or the ego because there is often judgment, a lot of the time condemnation, <laughs> and this need to try and fix things, meaning fix these parts of the self that have been identified as bad or wrong. And in that moment, we've just labeled those parts exactly that. Um, this is about observing yourself the way you would observe any situation where you have no attachment to it. You're simply there as the witness observing the entire um, scenario playing out. You know, that silent witness that can give this accurate version of events, if you will. Um, and the second theme that came in with this is the energy of lion. And lion, and I'm looking at my lion hanging on the wall as I say this, <clears throat> lion brings this message of courage, but also this connection to ancient Lyran energy. Um, and so again, I've been shown to interpret this in, in a couple of, or three different ways. For some, this month is going to offer this uh, invitation to begin this process of this honest, objective and neutral is being highlighted, self-observation. It's this deep dive into the truth pool where you start to see all of yourself, your strengths as well as the parts that need strengthening and then those parts that you um, really <clears throat> don't even like to admit to yourself are there. Um, this is about learning to accept all of those parts as being part of you without turning on yourself in that process. And it takes courage to begin this journey. So this is where courage comes into it for here. It takes courage to even begin the journey, to be willing to see where you need to make changes instead of excuses. Um, so for some, it will be this invitation this month to begin this journey. For those who have already um, been on this journey of self-observation, courage will be needed to make the changes that you identified during your deep dive. So it's one thing to know what you need to change. It's another to actually initiate and then move through the changes needed. Um, as often, this is when it's most painful during the initiation and the, the um, transition Phase. It's fine when you get to the other side, you can see the, the whole point of it and um, positive changes happen. It's during the transition that it's really hard. And so the message is ask yourself why you want to make these changes, like why you really want to make them and then tap into that ancient courage within your heart and know that you're strong enough to do it. Ask your team to support you. The message is coming in really clearly. Ask your team to support you while you let go of what's no longer needed so that you can initiate this rebirth process and emerge trans through this. It's like a transformation. You're going to initiate your own rebirth by being willing to make these changes now. And because it, it does, it takes sacrifice to let go of, of things that have become really deeply ingrained. The third um, way that this is to be interpreted, and again, with everything I say, just take what resonates. 
I'm not saying this is what the whole collective is going to experience, but within the collective that will resonate with what I'm saying, potentially, there are three ways that this could be playing out. Um, so for those that have already made these painful but necessary changes, uh, you, you know, you initiated the deep dive, you've gone there, you identified what needed to be let go of, what needed to be changed, and now and you've done it, um, or you're very close to finalising it. This is a message of acknowledgement coming through that it takes courage to really see yourself, to be willing to change, to sacrifice, to adapt, and to follow the truth of your heart, your soul. Um, and it takes true, oh, I can't emphasize this enough, heart-based courage to challenge the status quo, which is what you're doing. Um, you've dug deep, you've refused to bow to another's truth, no matter how uncomfortable it may have been, and you're triggering others with your own energy and actions. And this is ultimately a positive thing. Um, it, it's, you know, it's catalyzing things. By simply aligning with your own truth, and this message I feel like I really need to get it right, and acting from this place of loving authenticity, you create this unspoken invitation to others. An opportunity to examine their own beliefs, actions, and their own ways of perceiving and experiencing themselves and the world around them. Whether they choose to accept your invitation is entirely up to them. You've already created a path and, and really it's not even your invitation. It's an invitation that has been created as a byproduct of you being in alignment with your own heart energy. So you've already created a path that others can choose, again, free will, to resist or to be inspired by. And it is in the courageous walking of your own path that you are facilitating this evolutionary shift in human consciousness. So whenever you feel your courage wavering, the message is to feel into your lion heart and remember your ancient roots and draw on this immense strength when you're facing any challenges ahead. So I hope that um, resonates with at least some of you. It feels like this very strong um, ancestral energy coming up for quite a few of us and this need to step into this space where it's not going to get easier. I think in some ways it's going to get more challenging, but the rewards are worth it when we're in our aligned space. It's really not challenging, if that makes sense. Like it is, but it's not. <laughs> um, so I'll leave it there for, for that. I also just wanted to share a couple of quick updates for those that might be interested. Um, I've been guided to create these new soul immersion sessions, as that's the name that's come repeatedly for it. And these are very much focused on less talking <laughs> and more creating this harmonic journey with Tibetan singing bowls, the tuning forks, light language has been emerging and I'm hesitant to call it singing, but um, it, it's how it's been described <laughs> to others that have experienced it. It's They, they perceive it as singing. Um, and it's really just setting a brief intention. These are going to be offered as personal sessions as well as group sessions. Um, the first group is starting on June 1st. So it's very much setting a brief intention for the group or for your personal session. What do you most wish to, for the personal sessions you get to choose, what do you most wish to experience right now? Is it balance? Is it alignment? Is it expansion? Is it healing? Um, you you decide what your intention for the session is and then there's a brief soul reading and then we go into this harmonic journey where I don't communicate apart from uh, whatever intuitively needs to be expressed and you just immerse yourself and see where it takes you but it's more about getting these multi-layered sounds happening so 
I will be adding those to the group sessions and ceasing the vibrational healing session. So that last vibrational healing session will be this coming Saturday, the 4th Australian time. Um, and the first solar motion group will be on June 1st. And all group prices are now dropping to $33. So that's for all groups. The next free group healing, if you participated in the March Equinox um, free group healing that I did, I, the next one now is on June 21st, Australian time again, and that's for solstice. So details of everything I've just mentioned can be found at feelfreewu.com.au and the link is in the bio if, if you're interested in exploring further. So May seems like it's going to be another interesting month while things have felt quieter <laughs> this last week. Um, something tells me they're not going to stay quiet for too, too long. So we'll just have to see what happens. Anyway, sending you all really big heart hugs and hoping that you're enjoying this um, roller coaster that we're on. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.